Hello my friends, welcome to my channel and I hope you're all fine. In today's video we're going to talk about supercapacitors and batteries, the differences between supercapacitors and batteries. I'm going to tell you how you can make your own supercapacitor at home, which materials you are going to need to make your own supercapacitor. In my some videos I can see that some of my friends confused about supercapacitors and batteries. They don't understand the basics and differences between supercapacitors and batteries. So in this video, I'm going to illuminate clear the differences between supercapacitors and batteries. And I have here a 500 Farad homemade supercapacitor, D capacitor. I will open up this uh, supercapacitor and I'm going to show you the materials I used inside uh, the supercapacitor. And after the video, you will understand, you will uh, be clear about uh, supercapacitors and batteries. So uh you will easily make your own supercapacitors at home so first of all let's talk about the basics of supercapacitor and the types of supercapacitor there are three types of supercapacitor the first one is electric double layer supercapacitor and pseudo supercapacitor and also hybrid supercapacitor there are some differences between these uh three types of supercapacitor in electric double layer supercapacitor the negative electrode and the positive electrode uh, are made of same material generally it used graphene or activated carbon uh, on the both plates on the negative electrode and on the positive electrode and they used uh, an electrolyte and when you charge the supercapacitor when you charge the supercapacitor the negative electrode and the positive electrode attract the ions negative ions and positive ions so uh, electrostatically your supercapacitor electrostatically charged and when you discharge the uh, supercapacitor the ions released and uh, the, your supercapacitor produce electricity in second type of supercapacitor i mean pseudo supercapacitor the positive electrode made of a metal oxide not activated carbon or graphene i mean uh, the material we used on positive electrode and negative electrode are different from each other on positive electrode generally to use metal oxide and in negative electrode again uh, you can use graphene or activated carbon so the working principle of pseudo supercapacitor is faradically also electrostatically so uh, it's a little bit uh, different than electric double layer supercapacitor. In hybrid supercapacitor, also both electrodes made of different uh, materials. On the positive electrode, again, generally it used metal oxide, and on the negative electrode, again, it used graphene or activated carbon. But so, what is the differences between pseudo capacitors and hybrid capacitors? In hybrid capacitors, the electrolyte should be uh, compatible with the metal oxide that you are going to use on the positive electrode. So in pseudo capacitor the electrolyte is not very important but in hybrid supercapacitor the electrolyte should be compatible with metal oxide that you are going to use on positive electrodes so now let's talk about the differences between supercapacitors and the batteries as you see i have here a homemade lead acid battery and my homemade supercapacitor i will tell you the differences between working principle of batteries and supercapacitors just a moment ago i told you that um, there are three types of supercapacitors and uh, it's working principle generally electric double layer and faradically or electrostatically it stores the electricity in supercapacitor there is no ion flows in the electrolyte uh, the negative electrodes and the positive electrodes due to their uh, high surface area they can storage a lot of energy inside it and faradically or electrostatically they just attract the negative and positive ions to each electrode so when you release um, these ions there will be a current in your supercapacitor and uh, the current will be very high but in batteries uh, the positive electrode and the negative electrodes uh, are made of uh, different materials and in the electrolyte when you charge uh, the battery there is a ion flows in the electrolyte to one electrode to the other electrode and it um, storage the electricity when you discharge your batteries the ions move to uh, opposite directions so the main differences between the batteries and supercapacitors uh, movement of ions and due to the movement of ions um, the batteries can store uh, much more energy than supercapacitors but the output current of supercapacitors is much more higher than batteries so you can use a battery longer time but if you want an instant current 
a supercapacitor work better than a battery. So now I'm going to open up my uh, homemade supercapacitor. I will show you the materials that I used in the supercapacitor and I will tell you how you can make your own uh, supercapacitor at home. It will be very easy for you to understand the basics of supercapacitor, my friends. Okay, my friends, probably you remember the supercapacitor about six months ago. I made the supercapacitor and made a video about this one. And uh, if you want to watch that video, there will be a link up here and you can click on that link and watch the video about the supercapacitor. In that video, I just uh, compare my homemade supercapacitor with the commercial supercapacitor and make some test, uh, made some tests on uh, them. And uh, in that video, a lot of friends ask me that what is the maximum uh, output current of the supercapacitor, what is the life cycle of the supercapacitor, what is the operating voltage and um, self-discharge. They asked a lot of questions about the supercapacitors. Now I'm gonna give you uh, detailed information about these homemade supercapacitors and I will try to clarify the working principle and how you can make your own um, supercapacitor. Since that time, over six months, uh, more than 1000 times I charged and discharged the supercapacitor and it is still working very well. So after 1000 time charge and discharge, I will open up the supercapacitor and we will see the situations of the material inside it, what's happening, uh, what's happened in this um, supercapacitor. And the maximum output voltage of this supercapacitor is about 5 amps. The operating voltage is 1.4 volt and this is 500 farad, uh, its capacity is 500 farad. Now, uh, as I said, it's still working very well uh, and now I will just open my um, homemade supercapacitor. Uh, watch carefully, my friends. As you see, I just rolled up my uh, supercapacitor. As you see, uh, it's still very clear and there is some electrolyte inside it. And it's the electrolyte is uh, still very clear. There is no dispersion of active material of the supercapacitor. It's um, very clear. Now I will uh, open it up. As you see, it looks very nice, very beautiful. I just loved it. Okay. Yeah. If you want to make a supercapacitor, you need two pieces of separator, uh, two pieces of uh, current collector. In this supercapacitor, I've just used um, copper foil. You can also use aluminum foil or other, other metal foil, but uh, and copper foil is working very well. And as the active material, you can use activated carbon, graphene, um, but graphene is a little bit expensive, so I, I recommend you to use activated carbon. If you want to learn how to make uh, active material, there will be a link over there. You can uh, click on that link, and in that video, I just show you how to make prepare this active material for your supercapacitor. Uh, inside it, it, there are some activated carbon, there are some graphite powder and polyvinyl acetate or polyvinyl alcohol. Mix it very well. Uh, the ratio is uh, should be 10 grams of activated carbon, one or two grams graphite powder and one or two grams polyvinyl alcohol or polyvinyl acetate and deionized or distilled water. You need to mix it very, very well until it becomes a slurry form and when it becomes a slurry form you can just cover the copper foil uh, current collector with this active material and just use two pieces of separator and roll it very well and put it inside in this kinds of plastic box plastic container and sealed it very well your supercapacitor is ready to use okay as you see, our supercapacitor is still looking very well. Yeah. 
This is the um, first electrode. As you see, it's still looking very well. There is no dispersion of active material. It looks very nice, still very nice. And now, and this is the uh, first separator. This is the first separator. As you see, my friends, copper foil is electrolysis in the electrolyte because sometimes when I charge my supercapacitor, I overcharge it. And in supercapacitors, if you overcharge them, uh, there will be electrolysis inside the electrolyte. So my copper foil is a little bit uh, oxidized and electrolysis. So you can see its color on the separator. And this um, pale blue color is copper foil. And copper foil electrolysis, it releases some pale blue material on the separator and this is the second electrode and the second uh, separator as you see my friends on the positive electrode the active material is almost completely decomposed its color changed it becomes a uh, copper material, some copper material, as you see, its color changed, see here, as you see, the material is decomposed, it changed, as you see, so its reason is the electrolysis and um, it's due to the electrolyte I used uh, inside my supercapacitor. I just use sodium hydroxide, water-based sodium hydroxide. It's good uh, for copper foil, but after a long time, after a long period of time, uh, your supercapacitor will be just like this because these are not uh, professional supercapacitors, but you can use your supercapacitor about uh, 1000 uh, times charge and discharge. So it's uh, pretty good, it's uh, fine for us. You can use our supercapacitor for about one year or two years. Uh, it will be enough, but after that, uh, your supercapacitor will be dying, as you see, inside the supercapacitor. So, if you want to make a supercapacitor just like this, get two pieces of um, copper foil, current collector or aluminum foil or any metal uh, foil and paste with uh, active material just like this and use two pieces of separate and then roll it up. Uh, sealed it very well in a plastic uh, container or plastic tube, plastic box, so your supercapacitor will be ready. Okay, my friends, we get the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed the video and get some information about supercapacitors and batteries. So, if you want to make your own supercapacitor and, uh, at home, I hope this video is going to help you. If you like my video, please like my video and subscribe my channel. So, take care of yourself. See you in the next videos, my friends.